Bush. Hello and welcome to Omni Takes, the new show that will dive deep into omniversal lore and legend. Here we will tackle head on the questions that you, the viewers, want to know most. Everything from the origins of Exequos, the XQ Rebels. Where exactly is Oblivion? We'll discuss the Academy of Omnisophical Arts and Sciences itself, criteria for acceptance, the admissions process, the backstory on Access and the Bureau, and what is beyond the Rim. We'll discuss Ethereans, the jobs of a gardener versus a custodian, the elements, the elemental estates at the Academy, perennial sterling, the pan-element fusion. We will get to the bottom of these issues and all those that keep our viewers up at night. Our first topic of our first show is brought to us by viewer Posey Truvis, who asked, could we please explain to viewers what is a dimension? How did the dimensions get their names? And another viewer wrote in, how does one travel between dimensions? The dimensions as we know represent a coordinate outside of time and space, even while including time and space. In essence, differing dimensions are differing realities. Pop culture is riddled with examples. I believe it was a cinematic endeavor entitled Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. The difference of your decisions. If you went one way, you would end up with one future. If you went the other way, or did not jump in before the doors closed, your life would be completely different. This has recently been addressed in the documentary on Loki, the Norse, the Timmy God of Mischief, as chronicled by those in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They discussed the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. The idea is that if one varies from their path, they create a new branch of reality, in essence, a new reality. They desire those branches to be pruned, to keep things going as they should with one grand scheme. However, in reality, there are infinite dimensions, infinite realities. They intersect and interweave so seamlessly and with such subtle nuance that most of the time we don't even know we've, we've branched off into a new reality. We just think we're going along as we were, whereas no, our reality has changed. For those who were born in the last millennium and remember a time before the internet and even before home computers, the minute the internet became a part of our everyday life, smartphones, what have you, your reality changed. That was because dimensions merged and you went from one to another so seamlessly you didn't realize it. There are others whom you have known in times gone by who do not have internet. They went a different direction. Their futures, their realities splintered from yours. This is especially true of friends and loved ones who have passed on beyond this realm, whether electively through ascension or tragically through that most extreme of experiences known as death. As far as how they got their names, many were just given letters from the Greek alphabet. They were not always called this, but in modern times, you have to remember that with Sophia of Erudig, when the Bibliotheca of Erudig was raised, we lost most of the knowledge in the Omniverse. The tragedy of the burning of the library at Alexandria pales in comparison to what we lost when the Bibliothecum G. Erudique was reduced to rubble and ash. Most of the records of language, of history, pre-RC, before the recorded chronology, are lost. But those are only as pertain to one reality or one dimension. Other dimensions probably still have those records based on the fact that there are an infinite number of dimensions. In modern terms, recorded chronology, we start with Din Alpha, going straight through the Greek alphabet through to Omega, and then using the people's parlance, what we now call English, of or pretend to Ingle, and those were just done in order of what was available. 
Far more interesting to me is the personalities of the dimensions. We are coming to you today from Dim Q, Dimension Q. This dimension is known as the Curious Dimension, owing to the general personality of the denizens of this dimension. Now realize that space, such as where we live on Gaia, is one of the coordinates. Again, time is another and dimensions are another. However, when it comes to space, there are an infinite number of Gaias in this galactic cluster known as the Milky Way. But based on the dimension they are in, they have completely different makeup. If we were in Dim R, which comes right after Dim Q, oh dear, no, we can't use them. They were absorbed by Dim S. Let's see, Dim Rho, that's using the Greek alphabet. They are the guileless dimension. One would think that they would be a kind and loving collective of beings in that dimension. Dimension Sigma, the dimension of change. One would think things would be ever evolving and changing there. However, Gaia would still be there if you are in the Milky Way because Gaia is a coordinate pertaining to space. And then of course, where you are on the space-time continuum, that is a designation as pertains to time. So for example, if somebody tells you they are from the Midwest, you expect a certain thing of them based on where they are from. You expect them to speak a certain way, enjoy certain foods, have certain sensibilities and, and modes of speech. That is the same depending on when they tell you they were born. On the continuum, you would expect based on the year they were born, where they are on the timeline, to again adopt certain attitudes based on that moment in time have a certain hairdo, certain fashions, all based on that place on the time continuum. These designations are merely tools that we use in describing and explaining and pinpointing. However, they are not absolute. As you will learn if you take Aetherian studies, consciousness is what determines these realities within the structure for lack of a better term, of infinity and eternity. So again, these designations are not limitations. They are just ways of organizing, pinpointing, helping to categorize without limiting. And now if you're thoroughly confused, we will go on to the last part of this segment. How does one travel between dimensions? This is where portals come into play. The Omniverse is not riddled with portals, as one may think. They are singular and somewhat rare. They are not on every street corner like a Starbucks here in Tim Q. The Academy is the rarest of all designations, in so much as it contains and maintains portals to every working dimension currently in use. As we'll discuss when we cover the topic of the Academy makeup itself, the Academy comprises its own dimension. You will learn much more about this in the upcoming Omni Tale, in Peyton Drake's Omni Tale, which is a chronicling of a life of a lad from Dimension Q, born in 1960, and what he went through going through school, going through appraisement, the whole cycle, getting accepted, and going to another dimension to go what we in DimQ call abroad. At the Academy, it's called go a-widing. And while in another dimension, he went to a terminus, similar to what we would call a rail station. And coaches, for lack of a better term, popped in and out of existence based on their arrival from other dimensions. Whereas a train would move along a linear track, traveling in space, if a coach is traveling through the dimensions, they do not have to travel along a track moving in space. They just have to appear and disappear. That will be discussed more thoroughly in Pete and Drake's story entitled The Road to Tohubohu. And that will be installments 22 through 28 of his 49 novella series in Sea Dragon Saga. For information on each dimension, its nickname, its general makeup, its personality, your best source of information would be Paltry Palaver, the booklet issued by the Academy of Omniosophical Arts and Sciences 
It is omnis vocabularium and directorium. It gives you vernacular vocabulary used in and around the academy, has a number of individuals listed in the directory, and I believe there are more than 1,500 entries in this Dimension Q rendition, all available through the campus bookstore, I believe. And that wraps up our introduction to the dimensions here on OmniTakes, where we dig deep into Omniversal lore and legend. For now, I bid you bendi Do join me next time when we discuss the Academy's campus, the history of the hub, and what is on the other side of this interdimensional entity. Cheriste son, friends. Tuta. Thank you.